Baker earned two bachelor's degree from this university, mainly Bachelor of Science in Mathematics major in Actuarial Science and Statistics, and Bachelor, bachelor of Secondary <coughs> Education major in Statistics. He also finished his Master of Science in Mathematics degree from this university and currently working on his dissertation for his PhD in marketing. A true-blooded Lasalista, our next speaker has been teaching with us since 2000. Okay, let us all welcome Mr. Francis Joseph H. Possibly those 
most in, uh, more inquisitive students would say, well, it's the science of logical reasoning. Doing things like this, making conclusions based from established facts, and so on. Well, <coughs> I, I guess all of them are right. Right? But, but today, we will have somehow get this idea that, yes, what, what, whatever kind of perspective you look at, mathematics is all of those things. But, as my talk, the title of my talk says, we're going to study patterns, isometries, and symmetries. So, again, to quote from the book, mathematics may be regarded as a study of patterns. So, we're going to study patterns. You've seen several patterns earlier from the talk of Dr. Lau. You've seen a pattern of the number of pairs of rabbits, the number of uh, the, the, the blocks that you've arranged in some form of sequence and so on. So those figures in fractals, somehow you see a pattern there. Given this, the next step you can do this, provide the next step and so on. So some students would say, oh, patterns. When you talk about patterns, it's just these sequence of figures or some would say it's these notions of, oh, I see a way of computing things. Well, what will be the next answer there? That should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I would, ask, I would then ask, what will be the next line there in that pattern? You would say there will be seven ones times another seven ones and the resulting there would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 6, 5, 4, 8, 2, 1, and so on. But can you continue that, so on and so forth? So that, that would be the question. Yes, other students would say, uh, these are not the patterns that we've encountered before. Some of them would say, yes, that's the pattern that we've studied. We, I think. Some, somehow, we've encountered these types of patterns, these types of questions. What's the next figure? What's the next number? What's the next figure there? So the pattern will tell you, you all have green circles. What else? Well, there should be some sort of a small square there that goes in, out, in, out, but not, not, that's not it. That small square also rotates in some manner from a counterclockwise, counter counterclockwise rotation. You start from a diamond shape at the southern part there. It moves to the eastern part and it becomes a square. <coughs> but it's outside the circle and so on. So you see a pattern of describing how, what should be the next figure? To them, to some students, that's what pattern is about. Figuring out what's the best way to describe what should be the next figure. Well, all these things are patterns, but we will mainly discuss patterns. Uh, uh, we've answered these, this, yes. But I forgot to ask you this question. So, what should be the next pattern there? What's the next number there? <coughs> Maybe I should include that as one of the bonus questions. Maybe you can stop any bonus question. But what is the next number there? That should be. Some students might find it difficult. I find it difficult to figure out what is the next number. Mostly, dapat mas madalina makita sa atin yan, no? So you have a pattern of saying, the first one is just 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1 minus 1, the second one is 2 to the 
2 minus 1, third is 2 to the 3 minus 1, and so on. So you get the next pattern to be 2 to the, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 minus 1. So you get 63. Okay? So, yes, uh, this is one pattern I always show to my students. Anyone can guess what's the next figure? I, I usually ask one student, can you describe the first figure? They will say, oh, probably that's a caterpillar. Second one, uh, probably becomes a cocoon. Then the next, oh, it turned into the butterfly. So what's the next cycle there? Uh, so, well, since uh, I've handled many Malabar class and many uh, uh, would share the same uh, sentiment that some students really, when they, when they hear the word math, fear comes out of their or iba ayona, iba. Never mind that. So, so the reason why I usually show them this is sometimes when you see problems in a, di in a different way, you always say it's difficult to solve. It's I can't do that. I can't think of any way to solve this anymore. But hopefully, after the course in Matabrin, wherein they will be given several perspectives on how to look at certain things in math. So simple things like symmetries, simple things like basic uh, patterns. If you somehow teach them in a different way, or give them different ideas on how to look at it, hopefully they would appreciate it. So, when I teach them, uh, when I give them this, and to those who don't get the answer, I would tell them, oh, maybe you're looking at it in a, in a way that you're always saying, oh, it's difficult to solve. But if you show them this, it's just easy to see that when you cover the left part, you see the number one. Given the first figure, over the first part, it's just the number one. I just provided several shades there. Cover the left part of the number two, uh, the second figure, this is the number two. So, you should be expecting that next figure. So it's a matter of perspective. Hopefully, at the end of the, the course, they get that perspective.
an overview of Portuguese to the tiniest of particles or patterns that you can see. So somehow uh, I would I would like to make a recap, not a recap, hopefully a, a recall <coughs> on our previous notions of what do we mean by symmetries? What do we mean by isometries of the plane? So I will discuss the notions of translations, reflections, and relations, and include other portions like light reflections, uh, dilations. I think Dr. Lau also mentioned earlier. Okay. What is what are transformations again? So when I discuss this concept in the math of class, of course they are liberal arts major. And if you show them a formula, well, uh, what are these concepts? So usually we this we this this we define these things as descriptions like by a transformation, it's just a process of shifting points in the plane from one position to the other, leaving points unaltered or unchanged. But that's your idea of transformation. So, uh, the, the, the burden now for those who will be writing down modules or planning out, creating presentations on this topic would be what if your students are diverse? Maybe you have uh, engineering students, science students. Uh, well, you can always point out that to those possibly few curious ones, you can define transformations as functions. So most probably they have been uh, encountered the notion of functions in their previous math subjects. Somehow we can include those concepts, like given a certain set of points and define a transformation as function defined by this equation. Somehow, hopefully, uh, that will satisfy the curiosity of those kinds of students. And I think in the, in the book that you have, there are also examples that provide transformations as functions like that. These are some examples of transformations. The point in the blue polygon moved to the red polygon by a translation, a rotation by around that point, a dilation. It's somehow you stretch the edges of that polygon to form that bigger polygon. Of course, a reflection around the, uh, about that line. So. Uh, well, to give it more visual, I provide pictures like this. A translation to them would mean like this. A shift from that figure going down, that's an example of a translation. So they see a figure moving down. From one figure, from But that's the idea. One figure, Goes down, that's a mini of a translation. <coughs> a reflection, of course, sh should be able to see a, a line wherein that's your point of reference. One should be a, a mirror image of the other one. Just like uh, this polygon, the, the top part of the mountain being reflected along this river. And so on. So the next type of trans uh, translation would be the rotation. So, so there is a figure that's rotated about that point in the tip of the wing. You rotate that figure 120 degrees, you get the next figure rotated again another 120, you get the third figure. And that's 
how artists like Asher constructed their what they call tessellations, the birds. It's just one part. There are many versions of the bird. That's just one part of it. Of course, uh, the other type of thrush, uh, transformation would be the dilation. Dilate, the term dilates, place or shrink. So ch change the size of the object, but retaining the, sh the idea of the figure. So from a small star, it becomes a big star, or from the big star, you get a smaller star. So, when I sh show them these kinds of transformations, I ask them, what, what do you notice about those kinds of transformations? Well, some curious ones would say, others, however you change the position, but the ideas of the lengths of the figures that you have did not change. Nagiba lang na position. Very the lengths of their sides, whether if it's a polygon, <coughs> remains unchanged. The only the, the other one, the, the, the transformation that separates the rest, would be the dilation. Dilation changes, uh, it, the, it did not preserve the length of any, any pairs of points in your figure. So, we, will, we have a special name for that. And they are our rigid transformations. So you, you, you try to produce, you try to give them more concepts in math that will hopefully uh, intrigue them. Well, some, some books call them rigid transformations. Others would call them isometric transformations. Or we just call them here as isometries. And that's part of our discussion. So these isometries are nothing but distance preserving transformations of the plane. Well, 
na mahanapan ko na idea, no? So, saan galing yung term na yan? Iso means the same, the Greek metri or metria measures, same measures. Yes, the idea of providing the same measurement. the notion of a glide reflection, a combination of a translation and a reflection, or vice versa. And together, here's an example of a glide reflection of horsemen. Una is facing the left, then the other one faces the right now. It moves downward when it's reflected along a vertical line. But it's reflected along a vertical line somewhere here. So to this light brown horseman is translated somewhere here, then reflected along a vertical line. And with that, I I I, sh I usually end the, the I, I ended the, my discussion there by providing this main point in the discussion of isometries that in transformations of the plane, any isometry on the plane would be classified as just one of those by how do you pronounce that? Chas. Uh, however they pronounce it, that's the idea. <laughs> Any chance. So but the idea, the point there is you, you, you give them the idea that whatever kind of trans isometry of the plane that you may have, you can classify that by one of these transformations. One of these isometries. And uh, I, one of my activities is for my students to produce all possible combinations of those four isometries. Of course, it's provided with a book, but to describe them by a with a specific example, like when they produce, when they perform a translation and then a rotation, does it necessarily mean a rotation? So to provide an example there, 